This is the GitHub page for the LilyGo TCAN 485. There's a URL on top. I'll provide a link under the the video after I after I'm done here. There's not really a whole bunch that you need from this page. There's some some good pictures and descriptions of of what's what on the board. The main thing is here it gives you the I/O pinouts that you're going to need later on to connect to. They provide a pin header for for the board, so the best thing is to solder that in. Um, I, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could solder the wires directly onto the board, but neater solution is use the pin headers and, and a socket. The other thing is. There's a link here to AliExpress. Let's go there. That's where I purchased my board. And it, it's probably the best option because it's it's the lowest cost, both for the, the product itself and the shipping. You can buy them on Amazon, but Amazon's charging, I think, 19 something for the LilyGo. And shipping is, I, I'm pretty sure it's $6. Thing is, they're, they're both coming from the same company in China. So, you know, if you buy it on Amazon, you're just paying more, in my opinion, for the same thing. I, I have seen them on, on eBay. I don't know. I can't recall what the prices were, but I'm sure there's other places you can buy them. But this is direct from. The manufacturer, you know, close as you can get. I, they do have a website that they sell on too, but I think this AliExpress, I think, is a safer option. Took me, I believe it was maybe a week to get it, so it, it's not really, it's not crazy long for shipping. So let's go back here to the to the GitHub. This here, you're going to need when you set up your uh, the Arduino IDE to program this unit. We'll go through that here in a little bit, but you have to make sure that all the options are set up correctly. You can use Ardu Arduino IDE. Um, if you know Platform IO, you can use that, or you can just use uh, UDEV and Linux. But I think the, the easiest method is to use Arduino IDE. Okay, let's go to Dollar the Great's uh, GitHub repository. This is gonna be the software that ties everything together. Really great project that uh, Daniel's got going here. So what you're gonna wanna do, um, click on battery emulator. And then go over to releases. And we're going to click on the, the, the newest release as of now is 6.5. You want to click on that. And down at the bottom, this is going to be for Windows. Down at the bottom, you've got your source code zip file. You want to download that. Click on that, download it. And then extract it, then go to the new folder. It'll be called battery emulator and whatever version. Click on battery emulator, software, and then you wanna, you wanna click on, double click on the software.ino file. That's gonna open up the Arduino IDE. And we'll we'll go from there. All right, so I was having all kinds of problems recording multiple screens. The the built-in screen capture software only does the uh, the screen that you're you're on at the time. If if you try to open anything else, it it wouldn't record it. So I'm trying this one here, OBS open broadcaster software 
And so far, I think it's working. So let's continue and see what, well, <laughs> what we can do here. Okay, so once the Arduino IDE is open, you're going to have to uh, go to Board Manager. That's the tab over here. It might start up. I don't know. It might start up in the Boards Manager. Then type in ESP, and it's going to pull up some ESP boards. And the one you want is this ESP32 by Espressive Systems. Don't install these other ones here. You only need this one for, for this project. Then what you want to do is go up to Tools, Board, ESP32, and select ESP32 Dev Module. Once that's selected, make sure that now these these are the settings that I showed you in the in the GitHub repository. Make sure all these settings are are correct. And then check your COM port. I don't have a unit plugged in right now, but well here let me let me plug it in. And Let's close that, go back into it. Now, mine shows up as a Lily Go T display for some reason. I don't know why. But you can see it's, you know, it's reading the uh, the serial monitor data from from the unit. So, so let me disconnect my uh, board from USB. So it looks looks like what you have on your end. And I'm going to restart this also. All right, so let's go through some settings here. The first tab, software.ino, you don't want to touch anything here. Um, you might later on when, when you know what, uh, what you're doing in here, you might want to change something. But for now, just leave this alone. Don't touch it unless you know what you're doing, like it says up here. Under user settings, that's CPP. Um, you're going to see first thing that, that we want to change, if, if you want to, is under this the web server section here. If you want it to connect to your Wi-Fi, you're going to have to put your Wi-Fi SSID here and the Wi-Fi password here. If you don't put anything in there, you'll still be able to connect to the unit's uh, web interface. It'll come up as the AP is going to come up as battery emulator. And this is the password to connect to the AP. If you leave this at zero, it'll do an automatic channel selection, depending on what channel has the least amount of interference for your area. We won't do anything with MQTT right now. Next tab here, user settings.h. There's a few things that you're going to want to do here. For, for the initial testing, I would just uncomment this define test fake battery. That'll that'll make the unit think that it 
it has a battery connected, but it's it's only a, it's a fake battery and software. You don't want to select any inverters at this time, so leave them all commented out. Make sure this define hw underscore lily go is is uncommented. It should be. This HW Stark is a is a board that um, a guy is developing, and it's it's pretty much there. I guess it, he's going to start offering them for sale. It's, it has multiple CAN buses on it and other things that makes it a real useful board for for this project. You want to also uncomment debug by a USB. If you don't uncomment that after you compile the software and, and it gets loaded onto the board, you're not going to see anything happening and you're going to think something's messed up, which it, it isn't. But if you uncomment debug, then you're going to see all the all the debug messages, which is going to, like you saw down here before, it's going to show you uh, all the values for the fake battery. Web server, make sure that's uncommented. And this, I, I think these two are uncommented by default. And again, nothing with the MQTT server. And That's going to be it to get this thing going. All right, so let me hook my board back up and we'll we'll compile it. Let's see, Let's see what we got going here. All right, so what you want to do is up here this this arrow pointing to the right, the upload arrow. Just click on that. And you'll see down in the lower right, it says Compiling Sketch. Now, on, on your machine, the first time you compile it, it takes, well, at least on mine, it takes a really long time. So just uh, go grab a cup of coffee or something, let it, let it do its thing. And I'll, I'll speed this, this section up and come back to it when, we, when we're ready to go. All right, it's uploading now. Now on yours, I, I've noticed that I think this defaults to, I think it was 9,600 baud. If you're seeing a bunch of gibberish down here, the baud rate is not set correctly. What you want to set it to is 115,200 baud. And then you'll be able to see what uh, what's coming out of the serial port. And these are these are the values from the fake battery. So if you're seeing this, then everything's in good order. But I think that's going to do it for this video. The next one, we're going to hook one up. And hook one up to an actual battery. We'll, we'll do the, the Nissan Leaf battery. And I'll show you the, the web interface and what you can do with it. Pretty slick. So if you got any value from this video, I would appreciate a like. And if you could subscribe, that would be awesome. Just trying to start this channel up and any little bit of help really helps. I appreciate it, guys. Later.